Uh, some nicely gradient Photoshop use circles. <coughs> Here's an analysis program where this black outline is the outline of the picture. And then I drop a bunch of this expanding kind of rain program into the picture. They, they fall and then they bounce around to try to get the biggest place they can find. So you just take a shape and you drop circles in it. And the circles are meant so when they fall, they hit a wall, they hit a wall, they keep expanding. The third hit, means that they got three points, can't really do anything from there. And they keep track of if they hit a wall or if they hit another circle. If they hit another circle, then that circle is kind of like their, their parent, child, and buddy. So every line that you see means that it's kind of got like a, a bone relationship to that, that other. Here's the drawing of one of these pictures. One by one. Let me tell you, the computer only does one thing at a time. <coughs> Where this could go, I mean, if, if you think about it, if there's too many bones, then there's not this thing as turning, because every, it would, whatever one would choose to turn, all the other ones would start constructing that turning. But if you tried, if I tried, you could probably make it so that the big ones superseded the small ones, and then you could draw something, and then all of a sudden just grab parts of it based on its its uh, size, and then just drag them out, and then hopefully everything would interpolate with it. Okay, go to Netflix, get this thing called Shadow Honeys. It's just a silly video of uh, silhouettes of ladies dancing. But silhouettes are exactly what I need for this kind of art. This is a, a it's not a vector, it's just paint. And every frame, I start on the exact perimeter of it, and then run in through the rainbow to the center. So every frame has just got lots of input. Here's an example of uh, Chroma King drawing pictures and then telling the computer to send videos through the different parts of the pictures. Just random kind of techno uh, remix movies. And then I paint these in Photoshop red, white, or red, yellow, green, and blue. And so each one has four videos running through it. So you're seeing art that's constantly changing its colors, but it keeps its shape. A lot of dynamics. <laughs> this is probably the best thing I've ever made in abstract geometric uh, expression and stuff. I'm just playing with variables. There's like a pinch operation right there where it's inverting underneath zero to another kind of world. So uh, every frame I'm just saying, okay, this variable needs to change, tweak this, change the colors, all of a sudden you get a different idea of where it's supposed to go. I was thinking kind of like batfish around now. Iris and fetus and uh, sooner or later you're gonna turn into this really crazy crab. Here's turning the grasshopper. So I feel like kind of nerdy because you, you just look at it here all day. Sometimes it's worth it. Because you're getting, you're getting, you're exploring. You know, it might be just a bunch of computations, but it's a uh, landscape. Those two black centers are kind of like the pinch pinch points that I'm moving around. Drama cheese is very malleable. Here's the growth program. All I'm doing is going to point, 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 point. And these polygons are programmed to switch. They grow where the block is. And they atrophy where they never interact. Just like the rubber band program, I think this is a really good example of kind of like 
filling in like an obsessive compulsive way because like you're just kind of cleaning or filling safe. Kind of similar. When you start seeing those mounds on all the centers, that means that it took the original polygons, the opaque polygons, and then decided that they are now an array of 70 polygons diving in on themselves. San Francisco, there's a place called the Exploratorium, and they have this cool program where you have pocket pucks, and you throw them on a table, and then there's this interactive program that's making the space for each one as they move. I, I was really amazed. It only had like seven hockey pucks, but you just throw them, and it's like being hugged by geometry, moving through all the other pucks. And there's like the averages so that two pucks always have lines between them. So I was working on a program like that. Here's the first try at it. The perimeter of the table has a little bit different properties because I was having trouble with like well, they can only interact with each other, but there's this wall, so they need to stick to the wall somehow. And this next video, I just said, I don't really care about the wall so much. Now, I think the, the most important thing for a program like this is simplicity. The reason why there's black spaces is because these nodes are trying to only interact with the point important variables, but like this guy, and like someone over there will make a, a center point over right here. And sometimes these inner guys, they don't know that that point is completely irrelevant to their system. So every one of these guys is trying to make do with a bunch of points and stay inside a zone. But they're overcalculated. And making programs like this, it's often a case where you go back to the the real world we need to try to find an analogy like if you study growth patterns for bacteria or mushrooms or other kind of organic phenomena, you get kind of an inkling of like how they do it and you're going to write a program that kind of tries to be inspired by that. You can take a global view where like they all know everything about the whole world or you can take an individual view where they only can have limited amounts of information. Sometimes it's kind of cheating, it makes it go faster if they all know everything, but sometimes it's too much. Old stuff, maybe like four years ago, I was getting pictures of Mandelans out of coloring books and then sending these trackers on. They're expanding out. This one's definitely inspired by mushrooms because um, if you've ever seen a fairy ring, they start somewhere and they eat all of the information, all of the energy, and they just expand out make a perimeter. So these guys, whenever they hit a pixel, they turn it blue, and that means it's consumed, they can't go back there, and so by definition they just go out, not in. Feels like something intelligence over. These guys are automata. I'll show you what they start like. It's based on every pixel of this whole board, every frame of this whole video is questioning what that pixel is going to turn into. And it's got eight rules. The eight rules are based on how many of its perimeter are black or white. So if you have five white around you, then you're going to turn black. So that's a lot of computations, but it's self-generating. I don't really have to do anything except for choose the different combinations of the eight boxes. And then I place one seat in the middle, and you're not limited to that. But I place one seat in the middle, and they start growing. A lot of them are self-repeating. It's like they have stabilities. This is more soothing, just taking a bunch of those mandalas that I extracted, and it's kind of zooming in on them. The hardest thing for this program was you zoom in on one, it gets too far, too close, and then the memory for that guy all of a sudden is at zero again for Mandala number three, while Mandala number two is still getting to you. So it's a swap game. And you can definitely see the one frame where you feel like the one fell away and then there's something new in the middle. 